Which is, no, no, don't hand that out. Oh. There we <laughs> the uh, conducting effective meetings, and when we solicited ideas for the uh, leadership summit, this is one of the things that came out of that solicitation. Some of us are challenged with the quality of the meetings we have, some aren't having meetings as we discussed earlier. So if you take that list of challenges we talked about earlier, yesterday, late afternoon, this is one topic out of that that I promise we'd come back to. And I also promised I wouldn't come in here and tell you here's how to run an effective meeting because I think you know, either because you experienced it or you didn't experience it, what kinds of things play into that. So again, for conversation and out of this we'll try and build a document that will come back to you. Okay? But let's talk about does a meeting, first of all, basic foundation, have a goal or a purpose? You think about your chapter meeting, and you can reach out to other meetings too. If you don't have one, then you can't very, very well measure effectiveness, can you? So the question is, and there's no one answer. This is not the answer to a chapter meeting, okay? In fact, through the course of the year, you might have a variety of them. What kinds of goals and purposes can you think of or suggest for chapters? You mentioned one earlier. Social network, social support time. That's certainly one. We have a business meeting, those people are going to be frustrated if we don't have time for the social interaction, for example. Not effective meeting if that's what they're looking for. What else? This is a warm room and I know it's late on Saturday, but believe me. Come on. If you don't say it, I'm going to start saying it because I got them all in my head because I've been thinking about this now for a week. <laughs> Education. There's a purpose for a meeting, isn't it? If you have an education meeting, that's very different than a social meeting. If you have a picnic, there's a social meeting that you're not going to necessarily have education about. So, maybe I shouldn't put that out. That, that, I think um, <laughs> some people, that was the answer key. Go ahead. some people, those who feel like they have returned normal or you know aren't really having problems, but you know, would still be interested are kind of turned off by a support group label or anything that says support because then they feel like, oh, I don't really need support. Why would I go? Or especially like younger people are in denial that they do need it, even if it is there, that they would be more encouraged to go if it was just advertised as a social gathering rather than, you know, oh, it's going to be an educational event. So uh, just the way it can be advertised could appeal to different people, which, you know, you'd have to target, know your members and target it to them properly, but... What's the danger of a support group? Negativity. Huh? Negativity. A lot of times I've seen such groups turn negative that people just want to complain about their problems. And that turns people off and they don't come back. They don't want to come and hear everybody's misery. But at the same time, you got things there you need to discuss. So how does a leader, for example, make sure that that discussion around the challenging areas stays positive and is productive as opposed to a whining? And I'm going to tell you, every organization got it. You've been there. You've got somebody in there that you have a hard time keeping them, I hate to say under control, but within the limits of what you should allow somebody to share their whining. Well, okay. <laughs> but the other part of it, go ahead, JP. I would usually, when somebody goes on and complains, I said, you know, that's a very serious problem. Uh, let's talk about it after the meeting and talk to them after the meeting and okay. move the meeting along. The other danger is that you get into ground where people are taken out of the device. And I know in the liver world, even the American Liver Foundation was reluctant to put any support groups up on their websites, which was an important thing for them to offer. Because unless there was a social worker there, they were held responsible for what happened at that meeting. And you often have a very passionate person who's holding these types of meetings. And invariably, that passionate person goes off and ends up being, oh, here's the answer. This is what you got to do. And you got to do this. And all of a sudden, you, you're in very risky air. So there's a danger to that. You got to be aware of, not that you can't do them, but you got to be very careful. And so you better have an effective leader to make sure. Stays on target. Certainly, would be something that the transplant 
programs themselves would be very cautious of knowing you're doing it because of that fear. Some programs more so than others. The, the, the chair person has to be aware of that. And yeah, particularly the item we've been having uh, some issues with are people who are not having luck getting on kidney investments because of psychological issues. And you look, yeah. I do understand. Oh, no, it's, it's beyond him. Oh, he's gone. Okay, good. There, there are some people that you're going to have to leave because they, they have issues beyond which any group can deal with. And you're not a psychologist, you're not a medical counselor, you're not the social worker. So sometimes you got to say, I'm sorry. And you're going to get some complaints about that, but you've got to do that to protect your organization. Susan? Well, when you say, what are some down, downsides of holding the support group? It, 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 dangers, of course. The, the dangers of, yeah, when I, if I, if I saw chair just as a support group, I, I just know how I am in it's what Julie was saying. Uh, denial. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with me. I, I don't need your support to make me feel well. It doesn't mean that if I heard from you, I wouldn't feel better. It's, it, you know, it's, um, and, and, I, and I don't care to share my problems with you. So a support group wouldn't interest me. I don't go to any at, at my transplant hospital because the idea of a support group, that I, I, I don't want to hear your problems. Right. I'm not going to tell you mom. You don't need but, a pity party to go to. Right, but in, you know, we have transplant movie nights at, that the and see, see a movie, and then we discuss the movie. Now, the discussion after the movie, could qualify as a support group because we're taking a story from the movie and then sharing how you know our thoughts about it but it, it's the presentation of it it's it's, it's it's a it's a movie man. I, I like movies yes. um, and there's, there's a now with the educational example. ones there's support in there but it's an edu the most rights are educational there's an example of overla overlapping goals and purposes huh? we have entertainment we have social time up front we have discussion time so you got some education you got some entertainment, you got some social time, and maybe that's the format of a meeting that's more effective than whatever we were experiencing today. Rudy? Going back to the support, I recall after my transplant, I had questions that my coordinator was unable to answer at that time because they had not walked down the similar problems I was running into. So she put me in touch with other females, other women, that were able to answer my questions direct. But that went on for, you know, a, within the one year period or two year period. And then after that, I was doing it for other people. And I think there is a time for the support, but perhaps it's more for the hospitals because now they are more tuned in to what recipients go through than they were 15, 20 years ago. Yet, there's a lot of hospital programs that don't have support groups. Some very effective ones, some don't have them. Some rely on other organizations, such as TRIO, uh, such as Second Chance, Heart Transplant, Philadelphia, to offer those support, and they use that as their support group. And given the way they're overburdened with caseload and all that's going on, sometimes that's their out. Yeah, I support group over here. And it's a source of volunteers and members. I don't think anyone should shortchange support because the other two items we need for education and uh, promoting organ donation are covered by a lot of other places. At least in our instance, support is something we have a unique segment of. In our that, that brings back a key thought. Go back to the mission statements, the four mission elements of TRIA. There gives you a good goal for your organization, your chapter, whatever, to focus on over the course of a year. Everyone doesn't have to be an education event. Everyone doesn't have to be an advocacy event, et cetera, et cetera. But as you look at that, if you're trying to design an, a year's worth of events, it's a good way to look and say, what are we doing within our organization to support our mission elements as a trio chapter? Really? Well, um, again, maybe more younger people, but uh, Athletic involvement, maybe if there's enough people within a trio chapter that like to play sports, you could try to join some type of rec league and 
not substitute a meeting, but in addition, as you know, more social events. Like the trio volleyball team. Yeah, yeah exactly. Something I did in one of my yeah, one of my college groups. I'll be the scorekeeper. The rec. <laughs> we had like a rec volleyball team, and it was I mean it was a lot of fun because then you still meet each other and you're still friends, but you, you're not focusing on you know. The transplant issue. It's having fun as a transplant. I, I, I like that idea. At one of our meetings, uh, we played musical chairs after the meeting, and everybody just had a blast. <laughs> yeah, we play like charades or have yeah. like a yeah. talent show. Or, so, an element of fun somehow in your meeting. Yeah. Sometimes we forget about it. No, but on Julie's idea, I think that that would be about yes, putting together a, a team in a larger league. I mean, your, your only cost is the t-shirts. Right. And you can ask each of the members who are on the team to do it. And if you're trying to find a league in your neighborhood, there's a website called meetup.com, M-E-E-T-U-P.com. -E you put in your town, you, you can find groups that do anything. If you put in volleyball, you'll find volleyball leagues in your area. And, and if you find a league, then you, know, you can submit yourself as a, as a team. And you can find photography classes, you can find, you know, anything you want. Um, on any topic, you can find groups. It's like a dating site, but you're finding groups, not... Yeah, talk about tiny. I mean, just think about this. We just heard yesterday that they canceled the 2012 game. Every team area has a bunch of athletes that are right now very upset, frustrated, they don't have the venue or the outlet they're looking for. If your chapter went in and said, I, I mean, they were identified. They came out to the last transplant game. You got people identified who are athletes and forming some type of team in that athletic area, be it swim, basketball, volleyball, whatever. So There's a timely time, time to reach out to the game. Softball leagues. Yeah. A, a time and did time Virginia go. luck out? Transplant games in Virginia, October the 1st, 2011, Richmond, Virginia put on by the <coughs> Virginia yeah. Transplant Council. I wonder if they do something about it. Huh? Yeah. We have one of those when we get through. Those are on the table out front. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Clyde, do you know, are they only for Virginia? Yeah, so the, the, the energy have to be a, yeah. a resident of Virginia. And maybe there's a model there for other states to use. Yeah. They were going for the off here. Other thoughts yeah. about, again, we're on meetings, goals and purposes, Support education, social exchange, business, and ideas. Um, having a goal and a purpose certainly adds to the effectiveness of meeting. You've got something to measure against. Okay? If your attendance isn't coming out, you better go back and look at your purpose. If that purpose isn't meeting the needs of your audience, you've got to look and say, well, what other purpose should we have? Should we have a different venue? And I'm going to caution you don't ask the people there at the meeting. They're the ones that can come. So, for example, if we talk in terms of formats, you know, the time and date, well, the people are there, it's, that's a good time and date. The people aren't there, the ones that are challenged by that time and date. So if you're having meetings in the evenings, there's, a, there's an area constituency that that works for. Others can only make during the day, but today, more and more, of transplant recipients go back to work. They're not available today. The but then you have the other transplant patients who aren't driving at night anymore because of the long-term whatever. I think for people in Virginia, we have to team up with WRTC in the next few months and start having meetings for people who want to go to the games and give them a trio brochure while we're at it. I'm sorry, which, which game are you talking about? I mean, we, you, just, you just can't get in the car and drive down there. You've got to have some kind of a local organization yeah. that says, okay, you know, who's going to go? I mean, NKF had meetings all year long getting their teams together. Yeah. Here in Virginia, we got to do something like that right here in yeah. the area. Opportunity is there. How many, where, what have you found successful as far as time and place? With, with ours, virtually everyone's back at work. So the transplant centers have their meetings or support groups in the day. That's not an option. Right. No. So we have an alternative. What you're called? Be that night. What night of the week do you do it? Uh, second Thursday every month. Okay. So having a set schedule makes it easier for people to plan for it. But again, you got to be careful. Those that are busy on Thursday nights, you're never going to talk to. They need to communicate to find out. If you're not getting the attention you're looking for. 
And then we got the wrong night. Everybody there thought it was the right night. Well, that's why they're there. Realize who you're asking the question. We do our trio meetings, for example, on a Saturday morning. If you would ask me, I'd say Saturday morning, you got to be crazy. But that's the only time we can find to get those people out. And so from 10 to noon, we've been getting good turnout. And that's parlaying into an opportunity with that transplant house you saw of uh, Susan's idea of going over as a trio chapter to do some cooking for that kitchen for the families that are staying in that house on a Saturday after our meeting. It's a block away. Place. What do you find is a good place? Anybody pay for meeting space? Good. OPO space. Usually pretty open to it. I don't know, you know, what the situation would be here if you were trying to hold an evening meeting since they're not around. In our area, there is staff there 24 hours a day, and there's a reception at the desk, even in the evening, that they know there's a meeting coming up, and they allow us to come and go as we please. And so it's very open to us. But as long as it, and we've got various meeting rooms, so it's never contention type thing. What's been your experience? Where's a good place to meet? The restaurant? Diner? Um, I know the Cleveland chapter, they meet at restaurants a lot. I think that's only where they meet now okay. because they felt they got a better turnout, kind of not an incentive, but everyone likes to go out to dinner, so why not go with a group of people? Um, I did say something that possibly a hospital is not a good place because people relate that to some negative experiences. Um, but I don't know if anyone else feels that way or thinks that. I love hospitals, but <laughs> I'll be there forever. Well, I think part of the issue there is that some people aren't connected to the hospitals in their local area. Yeah. But all the hospitals in the greater Philadelphia area, even in the suburbs, you have to pay for parking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 The they don't have free like parking for their patients? No. No. Oh. Some hospitals do, in a competitive marketplace, the center that's not doing as many as the other one sometimes will. And so we've got organizations that get free parking associated with the meeting. Uh, the major hospital, you know what, they don't feel competitive, they don't have to. So you pay to park there, which is a negative. We hold meetings, we don't hold meetings. It's great, but it's, hmm. if, you, if you go to the University of Pennsylvania, the main campus, the minimum parking fee is $6. You go in for a blood test, you're back out. Uh, it, I, actually, once they didn't charge me because I was in and out and missing half an hour. But, you know, yeah, that doesn't, yeah. That, yeah. that's happened once. Yeah, I know it. it, yeah, it it's, it's a $6 minimum, it's good for three hours. I think almost all of them in Cincinnati, you have to get it like stamped that said you were there. But By design, we meet at a hospital that doesn't do transplants. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's so beautiful, beautiful that people, I, they just finished the re remodel and some of our members are saying, God, it makes you want to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> but do you ever get any people that are, like, are kind of negative about going to a hospital? Because I am. <laughs> Again, if they're not coming to me because they're negative about it, you don't hear They're down by the cafeteria. They're not by the, they're not on the floor. Yeah, right. Jamie? I personally don't like going to hospitals because I fear for the germs that I might counter while I'm there. Sure. Um, I, our doctors have always said, you know, avoid hospitals. Yeah. Um, they're here locally. They have a support group that meets at the transplant center where people go to get their follow-up care, which is actually not in the hospital, which is, is a good idea. And also, um, when the hospital back where I used to live, they have an educational wing. And so, uh, like you say, you're not, you know, you're not really in the hospital proper. Right. right. But that might be another avenue. They have a you know a place for strictly for educational programs. That might be a good. But that's kind of work. The added advantage of that is you have multimedia environment, so you can use things like Skype, like the DVDs, etc., for presentations when you have a speaker. So that's it, JT. I, I think one thing that's important is uh, parking where it's going to be free, and plus where you can get. To the meeting without walking a long way because a lot of transplant recipients have trouble you walking mean, notice several people with canes and everything if they have to walk a long way to go to the meeting they're not going to go maybe it's parking near the elevator right no. but just does anybody I'm, I'm, we have here wrtc every about twice a year has candidates forms 
generally at one of the hospitals and would uh, feed these people after the in the middle of the meeting. There's a speaker from Trio there, and there's speakers from different hospital, different transplant centers there, which takes the place of a meeting, and you get a chance to meet people. Yep, great venue. Do they do that in Philadelphia? No, they don't right now. What we've done as a Trio chapter, we've got a candidate's night this design to replace the one that disappeared a number of years ago. Hospital independent, so that gift away program like would be here. We don't have a competitive issue. And as we get, we've got a lot of resources of very special people who come in to address the different subjects. We're going to record that, package the whole thing, and offer it as a template to any other chapter we'd like to use. So you have the whole program with video if you wanted it. Or if you have a local expert who could break any of the subjects, you could use your speaker within the framework of the agenda. Or if that speaker doesn't show up, you already got the video you can use. Or if you're not going to be able to engage the speaker. So we're first time we're doing it, we're going to use those experts we can get hold of for those various subjects. We're going to record that. And then in the future, <coughs> we can use that those videos like we did here. A little bit shorter, edit down what they tell us, et cetera, et cetera. Steve? So let me ask, you've got what, 13, 14 centers? And 43. So, 43 transplant programs. Wow. So um, what do you put in this program so it's not geared toward any one uh, uh, center. That doc is. Let me, let me look by the time I get through. I may have the agenda here to show you. Okay. Right now. Yeah. Let's continue with the. Our, thing our hurdle is finding the candidates. Uh, how, how do we advertise to the candidates? Yeah. Uh, the hospitals have their own candidate time where they focus on their program. Sure. We're talking something broader, and we're going to talk about you know multiple listing. I don't think the hospitals have to mention that. Right. By you know the rule, but. Uh, I'm sure it's not overemphasized, whereas we would have a whole segment on the positive nature and what's involved in multiple listing, et cetera, et cetera. Julie, did you have your hand up? Oh, no, I'm just okay. Uh, food or not, what's, what's the experience with food? We, uh, when we stopped offering food, then it did drop. And the, <laughs> the Gift of Life program has various, various, various volunteer groups, and they used to supply pizza, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And their budget got tight. So they eliminated that. So now there's water and there's some chips. And they may bring some soda, which they eventually got so out of date, no one drink it. Okay. But um, that was a draw, and we took it away. It was surprising to say, come on, food can't be that important if the substance is there. You know what? Human nature being what it is, it is. So we have been supplying food for our trio chapter meetings. We left it up to the group coming as to who wants to volunteer to bring coffee uh, and some snacks. Uh, and sometimes, you know, we're not getting enough attendees to worry about, in which case they don't bring in a gallon of coffee. But we always have, at the Gift of Life program, a staff upstairs answering phones all day <coughs> that they can turn over any excess foods to, and they certainly appreciate that. What's your experience been with food? Is it live food or not? Or only for special events? Only for special stuff. Why? Because okay. our meeting places next to a cafeteria, but they close down just before our meeting starts. <laughs> Not sure what to do with it. Okay. Well, we supply food and drinks. Uh, usually cooking and fruit. Okay. We just do special events. We had a Valentine's Day dinner because our meeting happened to fall on Valentine's. Mm -hmm. And Carl from XDX bought dinner for the group. So it didn't cost us anything. Right. Um, we have, and I brought some water a few times, but for the most part, people just bring a drink with them, like several of us here, you know, you have, you know you're going to the meeting, and you know, you're going to be thirsty, you just carry something with you, so. It's kind of hard, like you say, you don't know if you're going to have five people or 50. The challenge we've had in a heart transplant support group, which had a picnic, and picnics over the years eventually died down. We had uh, multiple organizations, we coordinated the picnics, they were the same place. One had it catered, so they charged, and they brought in catered food, and our group, hey, bring your own food, back then. And over time, that dwindled to where the final meeting, I think it was just you and me, with the first picnic table, right? And the other group finally stopped doing it. Uh, they went back to having picnics, but they had a charge, and it was the minimum number the caterer would provide, et cetera. Came a challenge because they didn't have enough people coming, they're wasting money, even though they got food donated to some piece of it. And so finally they said, we're not going to do it anymore. Being a member of the group, I said, wait a minute. I believe we should have a picnic, but let's do it differently. And everybody said, what? I'm going to form a committee. Four people said, I'll join you. 
and I sense committee is going to sponsor the picnic and there would be no charge to come. You don't have to register. We're going to find a place. Prior to that, they were finding places cost $200, so you had to charge. We're going to find a place there's no charge for. And the minimum resources, some charcoal, some ice, a couple things like that, the committee would sponsor. So we're talking about 20 bucks worth of stuff. And we had five people on the committee. And so we said it was a bring your own food type thing, so it didn't matter whether 10 came or 100 came. There was enough food for everybody, and it was food that they would eat. And so that's been successful, and we opened that up to all the groups, because most of the groups had too small intentions to do that. And so we, for the past three years, have done that. We've had in the neighborhood of 50 people come out and have a great time. Somebody brings games for younger people to play and old people to play also. Uh, most of us sit around picnic tables, social time. We've got the grill going, bring your hamburgers, hot dogs over, fire them up. Uh, we've got ice and uh, put a couple of banners out there. Had a great time. And we're in a park where it costs nothing. This year, the park costs 50 bucks. They changed it. can imagine what's going on there. And so I went back to the organization and I went to the committee. I said, guys, you know, will we each cough up whatever it takes to pay for 50 bucks? And they said, sure. There was five this big deal, 10 bucks. One of our committee died this past springtime. And she was well loved. And so I said, we can't restrict this just to us. Uh, I think we should make this a memorial picnic in her name. Everybody's a great idea. So we went before the board of the organization and said, we're going to have this picnic in Ruth Miller's name. And if anybody would like to make a contribution in her name to help support this, because we have to pay 50 bucks for this, we'll do that. See me. Within five minutes, I had $150 in my hand. And none of the committee had a chance to come in yet. And so we paid the 50 bucks. We already had to pay for it, of course, because we have to date and everything. And we have the rest of the envelope waiting to see what we're going to do come the fall when we have that picture. So there are all, all sorts of opportunities. And it don't, my big thing is it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can do things in ways that doesn't cost anything where somebody else is going to support it. And so every time somebody wants to stop doing something because it costs money, I say, wait, let's look at a way of doing this that doesn't cost money. And so everybody comes, they bring the food they want, we have a great time, and it's been starting to grow again. So it went from zero back up, it's bouncing back by changing the format. So don't be afraid to do something different, even though you've been doing this all those years. Uh, should you have an agenda or not? It depends, doesn't it? What's the purpose of the meeting? It doesn't deserve an agenda. Does a picnic deserve an agenda? Probably not. Not in a formal one, at least. If you're going to have a business meeting, you better have an agenda. If you're going to have a sports social time, you don't need an agenda for that. You need a framework for it. So again, it depends. Uh, free format for different types of meeting, variety, especially events. Hey, we had, Susan, were you around when we went to visit the helicopters? Yeah. We, we engaged one of the hospitals to go up on the roof and tour the helicopter. And a number of people had been transported by that helicopter. It was a cool meeting. And we met at the hospital, evening, went up to the top of the roof, had a beautiful Philadelphia night in the summer, and got the tour. I gotta tell you something, everybody saw that helicopter different. Some lives had been saved with that helicopter. Others, their deceased children had been brought in on that helicopter. One guy was an engineer with Boeing. He was up front, they were repairing the uh, steering mechanism. He was up there engineering it. Another guy was introducing his kids to where he was brought in on that helicopter. It was a fascinating night. The helicopter crew loved doing it. And then we turned around and they said, hey, anytime we can help you. We said, we have a picnic out in the Heatherlands. Oh, we'll come to it. You will? They flew the helicopter out there. It turns out they're based in three different areas. They flew in. We had to get the local fire department, which was glad to do it, to set up a perimeter. We were with their engines a whole bit. The helicopter flew in. We were thrilled. We had a cake in their honor. They said, hey, let us know next time. We'll bring all three helicopters. <laughs> Honest to God, we have, I still have the picture around of everybody <coughs> sitting in, in the side of the helicopter with this picture. They loved it. We loved it. We haven't done anything like that in a long time. So the way things branch out, they grew it. Got a nice audience. It was fun. Other ideas? Technology. Laptop projector doesn't take a whole lot. Somebody in your group's got a laptop. Tell me they don't. They do. Or 
some other type of technical device that can load up a presentation, a video, get on the internet, do a YouTube, whatever. You need a projector. Most, if you're using those education centers, they're, they're equipped for it. You may not know how to use it. I don't know how to get this thing to go back up. Ron is here. Uh, so it's there. Speakers. The DVD library. How many have actually used the DVD library? One. That's what I thought. Three, uh, JT, you said two. Yeah, we used it. Two, three. That's a great resource out there that's being unused at this point. It's a real shame. Um, what? Do me a favor. Yeah. Change the address where you're sending stuff to our chat. Okay. To oh, I've, got, I've got Trudy now. Okay. Arranged okay. on that. But we're let's arrange to get, get it back. The we're library that she's got, right? We're trying to get the library from London to Trudy so we can all figure out what's in the book at this point. We don't know. So, we're yeah, we're working on that. It needs to get back here. It got taken. We you sent it to the post that. office box. It's always there. And has been we need to have a name because we want to know who's got it because people ask us, well, who's got that library? And the post office box is not the book. <coughs> right. So, Trudy, Linda, whatever it is, with a we're, name. We're working on that. Good. And there's, 20, there's almost 24 programs out there today. Great research one. Uh, ask for feedback. Don't just ask for the people that are in the meeting. Ask the people that aren't in the meeting that you don't see anymore. Why aren't you coming? We had a voice ability for you to attend even though you're stuck at home because you're no longer tra traveling or you're too far away. Would people dial into it if you had something interesting for them to dial into? It? Most of the centers have something like that. The easiest, believe it or not, I participated with an author one time who was giving a presentation down in Jacksonville, Florida, and I was a friend of the author's, and I, I wish I could have gone to Jacksonville, but I could. Hey, he turned on his cell phone. Ball cell phone. <laughs> and he put it in his pocket. And I was there, I seemed to give the presentation, I could hear it clear to the people in the room. And we got the question answered. He said, hold on a second. Jim, what kind of questions do you have first? I mean, I got the priority. I was super. It worked like a charm. Now, it's just one-to-one, -one, but if you uh, need some support for that, let us know. We'll create it for you. What are other best practices that you've had or you've seen that work? Any? Or we're just at that point where it's really good. I feel like we've touched on most everything. Between yesterday's time and today's okay. time. Okay. Do you want to add anything? Well, I'll reiterate what I said yesterday about we're going to try having other people share the name. Good idea. Get some bright in there. Okay? And again, depending on the type of meeting, different personalities would work better than others. Just because you have a picnic doesn't mean somebody can't get up and give some formality to it, lead with a prayer, open it, thank donor families, whatever, and uh, have something to say or recognize somebody for the work they've done through the year at a picnic, and that's cool. 